Hey, how about you bitches? Please like and comment on this video and subscribe to the AWF Network here on YouTube for more AWF and CCWO content. And don't forget to hit that fucking bell for notifications anytime content is posted. And ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our main event of the night, the 30-man Royal Rumble match with the winner going on to the main event of Glory Days 5, the challenge the champion of their choosing. Blackos entering the Royal Rumble here tonight at entry number 12. This isn't actually happening, is it? We're getting funky at the Royal Rumble. I feel your presence among the stars. You cannot hide in the dark. John Blackos has done it! John Blackos has survived! He has won the Royal Rumble and he's going to the main event of Glory Days 5! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new edition of Uprising. I am Philip Ontario, as always, here on Commentary, and we are coming off of one hell of a Royal Rumble event on the road to Glory Days 5. But folks, the first stop is tonight in Newark, New Jersey, and we got one hell of a show for you. People have been celebrating worldwide since John Blackos won the Royal Rumble match, and he is here tonight. When we find out which championship he'll be challenging for at Glory Days 5, hopefully we find out more later on. Also, we're going to see in tag team action, we're going to see the Exterminators take on Tyler Watson and Bobby Mitchell. Also, we will see the team of Damian Valentine and the Savage Jamal Bedlam take on Irvino and United States Champion Scott McShannon. Also, we got a new superstar here on Uprising coming over from Superstar Mayhem, but we don't know who it is. But what we do know is they will be taking on the returning Danny Hardy tonight. Of course, we also got TJ Nicholson. He's going to be making his Uprising debut tonight. And of course, we got the big 
Extreme Championship match that will be kicking off the show. So let's get to it. What a way to kick off the night here on Uprising with an Extreme Championship match. Now we await the arrival of the challenger. The money is falling down. That can only mean one thing. That must mean the face of first class is in the building. And there he is, Lewis Rivers. One of the fastest rising stars in this industry. Lewis Rivers, he came to Uprising with his now former tag team partner, Walter Scott, 3G. They went on to win the World Tag Team Championships. And after uh, they lost the titles, Lewis Rivers turned his back on Walter Scott with a vicious assault. And then these guys, they battled everywhere, led to call all-stars. They battled all over this building. Led to that, uh, that no disqualification match between those two where the loser had to leave Uprising. And as we know, Walter Scott, he lost that match. Lewis Rivers able to pick up the victory. Walter Scott, in fact, is actually going to be going to Superstar Mayhem, as we found out on the AWF website. If you do not follow AWF social media or the AWF website, you're missing out. The news broke that Walter Scott is heading over to Superstar Mayhem we found out there was an additional clause for that loser leaves uprising match that Walter and Lewis had where whichever one of those two lost they would be going to Superstar Mayhem and Superstar Mayhem would be trading over to Star to Uprising. That star is in the building tonight. We don't know who it is but we know they're here. We know they're in action tonight. be one hell of a show folks and here comes the double champ Travis two belts a man who's been very very busy over the course of the past few months at the Royal Rumble Travis Sparks had a champion versus champion match with Brian Stone on that night Travis was able to retain his AWF championship and then also win that championship he now has around his waist the extreme championship Travis Sparks has done a lot here in the AWF former junior heavyweight champion million dollar champion extreme champion AWF champion he, he's very close to hitting that uh Grand Slam. All he all he needs is the tag team titles. And the, uh, the path he's been on, maybe maybe he'll do it. And look, Travis didn't stop there at the Royal Rumble. He had to defend that championship, the AWF World Championship, that is, at Call All Stars 12 in an unbelievable match with Sean O'Connor. A Call All Stars rematch, and it, it lived up to the hype, folks. If you haven't seen it, you gotta check it out. These guys put it all on the line. Travis was able to pick up the victory. And in fact, Sean O'Connor, the former AWF World Champion, at the conclusion of that match, announced his retirement from, from this industry. You know, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later on. Because that certainly shakes things up here on Uprising. That's one of our top stars gone. But that's okay, because that means... It's an opportunity for some some new stars to climb up the ladder. Could it be that new superstar coming over from Superstar Mayhem? Could it be TJ Nicholson who's making his uprising debut tonight? Could it be the challenger in this match, Lewis Rivers? Got to make the most of your opportunities. 
Lewis Rivers has a hell of an opportunity here. Travis Sparks, he wants to be a fighting champion. He doesn't want to sit around and wait till meltdown. He doesn't want to sit around and wait till glory days. He wants to defend his titles. And tonight, he is defending his Extreme Championship. And I'm sure we will see him defend that AWF Championship at some point as well. Lewis Rivers, he's ready to go. Travis looks ready to go. The referee is called for the bell. And here we go. This match is official. He's feeling arrogant and look at Travis. He's not going to take it. Travis taking it right to the face of first class. And oh man, Lewis Rivers able to drop Travis over the top rope to the floor. And remember, this is an extreme championship match and you know what that means. Anything goes. Extreme rules. Big slam on the floor. Lewis Rivers if you remember that match he had with Walter Scott, you know he is not afraid to do what it takes in these kinds of matches. And oh my god, the brain buster on the floor. And it's all legal. He can do what he wants. He can do it as long as he wants. He's not going to get counted out. He's not going to get disqualified. Lewis has got Travis up. And oh man, big slam onto the ring apron that's the hardest part of the ring folks Lewis Rivers he knows that he's using it to his advantage and what is he doing uh oh he just picked up a steel chair he's got the steel chair in hand and here comes Travis Sparks the double champion with the big dive over the top rope landing right on Lewis Rivers Travis Sparks would like to kick off his Extreme Championship reign with a big title defense here. The kickoff uprising, and now Travis has got the chair. Oh, Lewis able to block it. Now he's got Travis clawing at the face. And a stomp to the back of the head. Lewis now has the steel chair in hand once again. Travis getting up to his feet. Lewis, what's he doing? Oh my god, steel chair to the head. And look at this. Lewis is not done using the steel chair and just attacking the champion. Oh, go oh god. Oh man, oh Lewis, don't do this. And oh my Jesus. Lewis had that chair on the neck of Travis Sparks and he just stomped on it. This man, he's ruthless. He's willing to do whatever it takes. Lewis Rivers wants to walk out of Uprising tonight with his first singles championship. Oh, man. He's setting it up. Knee to the head. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, my. Oh, man. The jawbreaker. He's not done. Wait, hold on. Oh, Dragon Sleeper. Dragon Sleeper is locked in. Travis has nowhere to go. With the ref Travis Sparks tapped out. Folks, it's over. What? Lewis Rivers, just like that, is the extreme champion. He came in tonight with one goal. And that was to win that Extreme Championship. And he has done just that. He went through Travis Parks. And he tore him apart. And then he choked him out. Lewis Rivers is the Extreme Champion. Wow. What a way to kick off Uprising tonight. A new champion crowned. And folks, I'm shocked. I, I can't believe it. Wait, hold on. Is that... Oh my God, that's Mason Chronic. That's the man that beat Sean Walsh at the Royal Rumble. Left him a bloody mess. 
and now he's got the steel steps and he's oh oh my god and oh my god steel steps in the face of Travis Sparks Travis has no time to regroup seems like everyone wants to get their hands on Travis oh man big pile driver Mason Chronic has laid out the AWF champion. Hey Travis, back at Survivor Series, I won a title shot of my choosing. And tonight, now that Sean Walsh is out of the way, I'm cashing that title shot in on the only title you have left. When you die, you die. You know, this is saying in the West. Only the good die young. Well, I'm glad I ate one of them. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here on Uprising, and before we went to break, we got massive news. Mason Chronic attacking AWF World Champion Travis Sparks, then saying that he is cashing in on his championship opportunity that he earned back at Survivor Series. And during the break, we found out that the general manager of Uprising, GMR, he, he's, he's made it official. That means tonight our main event is Travis Sparks defending the AWF Championship against Mason Chronic. That is after Travis defending the, the Extreme Championship against Lewis Rivers to kick off the show tonight, which he lost. Will Travis Sparks walk out of Uprising tonight with no championships after walking in with two? We'll find out later on. But right now, we got a former world champion right here in Christopher Wonder, the man who entered number 30 in the Royal Rumble match. But unfortunately for him, 
He was unsuccessful. Christopher Wonder saw the Royal Rumble as his last opportunity to get back in World Championship hunt for glory days. But there may be some opportunities along the way. And one way to get those opportunities is to pick up wins. Christopher Wonder has a, has a big opportunity here. He's going up against a new star to the Uprising brand. Up and coming star. We'll get to that in a moment. But Christopher Wonder wants to get back into title contention. Whether that be in the World Championship title picture. Whether that be in the United States title picture. Christopher Wonder, he's been world champion a few times. He's been tag team champion. He's never held a secondary championship here in the AWF. And I believe that is still a goal for Christopher Wonder. Christopher Wonder, he looks ready, focused. Now we await the arrival of his opponent tonight. The man who made his AWF debut in the Royal Rumble match. And there he is, the news broke on the AWF website after the Royal Rumble that GMR made it official and signed TJ Nicholson, that man right there, to the Uprising brand. And what a performance he had in the Royal Rumble. Just like Chris Wonder, he did not walk out with the victory. That went to John Blackos. One man who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Blackos is TJ Nicholson. He impressed a lot of people, including our general manager here in Uprising, who signed TJ. TJ Nicholson, wow, like what an opportunity for this young man. Going up against one of the best in the AWF. Look at Christopher Wonder's resume. It speaks for itself. Two-time AWF World Champion. AWF Tag Team Champion, Royal Rumble winner. This man's been in the main event of Glory Days. And TJ Nicholson is getting him one-on-one -on -one right off the bat. TJ Nicholson's been uh, impressing a lot of people, not just in AWF Royal Rumble, but also at the Call All-Stars 12 Royal Rumble match. An impressive performance on that night as well. But now it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a Royal Rumble. Let's see what TJ Nicholson brings to the table. You see Christopher Wonder backing Nicholson into the corner. Clean break there. Some respect shown between these two competitors. He says lock up once again. Go behind there for Nicholson. There's a snap mare into the the chin lock here by Wonder. Wonder now is digging the knee into the back. And look at Christopher Wonder saying, hey kid, bring it. What a night it has been thus far. We kicked off the night with an extreme championship match between Travis Sparks and Lewis Rivers, where we crowned a new Extreme Champion. It's not the only championship match we're going to see tonight. We're going to see Travis Sparks in action again, defending the AWF World Championship against Mason Chronic. That's our main event tonight. So we're going to be hearing from the new World Tag Team Champions, the Blade Runners. That's going to be coming uh, at the conclusion of this matchup, so stay tuned for that one. Christopher Warner hitting the big knee to the face of TJ Nicholson. Bulldog there. Folks, we are on the road to Glory Days 5, but we got one stop along the way, and that's Meltdown. And oh man, Michinoku driver by Wonder. And only a one count. Actually, I think the referee may, may have called two on that one. Very close, but TJ able to get the shoulder up. Wonder now heading up to the top rope. And TJ Nicholson throwing him off. I mentioned Meltdown because that's an opportunity for everyone here in the AWF, Uprising and Superstar Mayhem, to try and 
earn your opportunity to get onto the Glory Days card in hopes to be in a championship matchup. That's the goal for everyone, including these two right here. Christopher Wonder is taking a beating right now. The early going in this match was all Christopher Wonder, but TJ Nicholson fighting back. Ropes, a belly to belly suplex. He's gonna send him oh my god! Modified suplex by Nicholson. Now into the cover. Is that enough? Two. Two count, but Wonder able to roll the shoulder up. This match continues. Snap suplex by TJ. Later on tonight, we're going to see not one but two tag team matches here tonight. We're going to see the Exterminators take on the team of Bobby Mitchell and Tyler Watson. We're also going to see Damian Valentine and Jamal Bedlam versus the team of Ravino and Scott McShannon. Goes wonder. Oh, kick to the leg. Up on the top, and oh man, crashing and burning. Belly to back suplex there by Wonder, capitalizing off of the mistake there by Nicholson. Big power bomb, and then this could do it. Wonder only getting the two count. Thought he had it there, but he's going to do a lot more to put this kid down. Wonder has something in mind. Big clothesline. If TJ isn't careful, he allows Wonder to capitalize and keep the, the pace as is. I, I think it's only a matter of time before we see Wonder walk out here with a victory. Wonder with the big running knee. That's trademark Christopher Wonder. And only a two count. Not enough to get the job done. I think a lot of people have got to be uh, quite, quite a bit surprised here tonight. A lot of people are probably unfamiliar with TJ Nicholson. Expecting perhaps to be, this to be easy work for Christopher Wonder. You gotta wonder if Christopher Wonder thought the same thing. Did he think coming in tonight this would be almost a night off? An easy victory for him. As we have seen thus far for these past several minutes, it has not been an easy night for the former world champion. And now, oh man! A big ripcord lariat. Two! Two! And only a two count. Chris Wonder dishing out one of his best moves. And it's not enough. You can see the frustration is growing. Stomping away on Nicholson. And here comes Christopher Wonder with a big lariat. Remember, it was earlier this season, back at the King of the Ring, Christopher Wonder was challenging for the AWF World Championship against then champion Danny Hardy. He was unsuccessful on that night. And he's been trying to get back to that point since. We saw back at Came for pride. Christopher Wonder was in a fatal four-way match challenging for the, the United States Championship as well as he was back at Cyber Slam. And a 
mean, I thought Nicholas almost had him there. But again, on both nights, he, he was not able to walk out with the victory and win the United States Championship. Christopher Wonder has had opportunities this season and has, has not gotten the job done. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just state, stating the fact here. He He's had op championship opportunities, and he hasn't succeeded. And I'm not saying anything he doesn't already know. He knows that. That's why tonight is very important. That's why... He, what he does going into meltdown in the glory days is very very important and look at TJ Nicholson doing a roll into the ring and landing a neck breaker TJ now on the top rope I don't know if he knows he's that, that now he knows now and there's the top row of Hurricane Rana this had to be a hard match for, for Christopher Wonder to study because there's not much tape to study and oh my god what the hell was that some kind of corkscrew body splash by Nicholson and that could do it only a two count wonder notice he barely a is able to roll his shoulder up big knee to the head Just for wonder oh man taken Nicholson down remember folks at the conclusion of this matchup, when we return from our commercial break, we are going to hear from the new World Tag Team Champions, the Blade Runners, so stay tuned for that one. Christopher Wonder now, big pile driver. And that, that's got to do it. He's, dra he's dragging him. Well, I thought he was going to drag him to the middle of the ring. Looks like he's not going to go for a cover. He's on the ring apron. Wonder now heading up to the top rope. I don't know why he didn't capitalize there. But now off the top, he goes for a missile drop kick, and TJ moves. What's this? Oh my goodness, what a modified body slam there by Nicholson. And now German suplex. I don't know why Christopher Wonder did not capitalize. I think he had a perfect opportunity to go for the cover, and he did not take it. Now is on the receiving end of that clothesline. But only a two count wonder able to get the shoulder up. What is TJ doing? TJ on the apron going for something. Oh no! He went for a springboard sent on. He missed. Big critical mistake there. Christopher Wonder, the veteran, looking to capitalize, hit the DDT, and now Nicholson is, might be in trouble. And here comes a ripcord lariat. That might be all he needs. Wonder not going for the cover, but he might be thinking complete shot. Here it comes. He went for a complete shot, but TJ was able to move. And now this, he's got him in a small package. Two. And that's three. What the, what the hell? Christopher Wonder went for the complete shot. And TJ able to roll off for the small package. TJ Nicholson picks up the victory in his uprising debut over a former world champion.
damn, it feels good. It feels amazing to have gold again. It has been too damn long. And the best part about it is that in my late stage of my career, while I've been the new on pro world champion in the past, while I've had success as a hardcore champion in CCL, it makes me so happy and so proud that I'm a tag champion for the first time ever in my career, and it's here in the AWF, and it's with my protege. You see, I took this kid under my wing for a reason, because I know he is the future of what this company and what all of Call Wrestling has to offer. And now we stand atop the toe as your tag team champions. The two of us are about to run roughshod against every one of the tag teams that step in our way. We ain't losing these belts anytime soon. You can bet on that. But you know who really deserves credibility? You know who deserves to get their, you know, stock higher? It's my boy Alex. Tell him Alex. You underestimated us, disciples, and you paid the cost of it. Because thanks for your arrogance, we pulled the biggest shock of the century by beating you guys to become the new tag team champion for Uprising. And now we are at the top of the mountain as your tag team champion. And we know you hate it so much, but you're going to have to learn to accept it. Because we gonna stay this way for a very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We just heard from the new World Tag Team Champions, the Blade Runners, who are we're looking who who's next. They won the championships at the Royal Rumble defeat in the Disciples. But they want to see what other tag teams rise up to the occasion and earn an opportunity to challenge for those titles. And it could be these two men right here, Hall of Famers, two of the all-time best, Brent Thompson, CJ Hawkins, the Exterminators. Former AWF World Tag Team Champions, they won those titles back at CyberSlam. They fell short to the Disciples back at Pain for Pride. The Exterminators, they came close to challenging for the championships at the Royal Rumble, but they lost to the Blade Runners in a number one contenders match. Now the Blade Runners, of course, they're World Tag Team Champions. So, the Exterminators, the goal has got to be pick up a victory tonight and get back in the title hunt. Get a rematch with the Blade Runners, this time now a World Tag Team Championship match. But this is a very interesting matchup because we have seen over the course of the past few uh, editions of Uprising that Tyler Watson has had some, some issue with the Exterminators. We've seen him, he's gone after CJ Hawkins after they lost that number one contenders match on the receiving end of the uh, Redemption Cutter. On top of that too, it seems that this all stems back to several several months ago when we saw CJ Hawkins take on a man who's Tyler Watson's opponent, uh, tag team partner tonight, Bobby Mitchell. On that night, we saw CJ Hawkins pick up a controversial victory where we thought that CJ Hawkins was hurt and he seemed to capitalize on Bobby Mitchell maybe feeling a little sympathetic since then Tyler Watson has been in the ear of Bobby Mitchell suggesting to him that he should join him Bobby Mitchell we saw on our last edition of Uprising he challenged for the United States Championship and he had an opportunity where the referee was down and he went out to go use a steel chair, which, if the referee was up, would have been a disqualification. With the referee down, I, I guess, if, if depend on your ethics, it's fair game. And 
Bobby Mitchell decided not to use it, and Tyler Watson saying that that was the wrong move, and if if he was with him, he would have pushed him to use that chair, and maybe that would have led to him winning the United States Championship, I don't know. Bobby Mitchell was eliminated in the Royal Rumble match by Tyler Watson. And it has led to tonight where GMR has put this match together. The Uprising General Manager. This is not Tyler Watson and Bobby Mitchell coming to terms and, and just have formed some kind of partnership. This, this is a match made by the General Manager. Bobby Mitchell may not be happy about it, but he's teamed with Tyler Watson tonight. The King. Bobby Mitchell. And, and look, I've mentioned some of his shortcomings, but Bobby Mitchell has also been seen his fair share of success as well. We saw a call All-Stars 12. He faced Superstar Mayhem's World Heavyweight Champion, The Punisher, Fisk, and he snuck out a victory. Just barely. But the record books will show Bobby Mitchell with the victory. And Bobby Mitchell keep his, uh, I guess his luck streak alive and pick up a victory here tonight. I mean, is he even going to be able to get on the same page with Tyler Watson? Seems Bobby Mitchell has been unsure if he should trust Watson or not. Let's see, we're starting things off with Brent Thompson and Tyler Watson. Was well, Thompson throwing Watson in the corner? He's got him in exterminator territory. These knife edge chops and it ta quick tag to Hawkins. A double shoulder block. If there's anyone who wants to get their hands on Tyler Watson, it's got to be C.J. Hawkins. He was attacked from behind by Watson. Now has an opportunity to get maybe a little bit of revenge. I think Brent Thompson as well, you know, maybe he feels a, a little bad about what happened because if you remember, he left the ring before Watson had went in there maybe if he if he stayed there stayed with uh, Hawkins he could have stopped that attack Brent Thompson who although being a former winner of the Royal Rumble did not have a very impressive showing in the Royal Rumble match let's turn things around here try and get back in the tag team title hunt big drop kick there by Watson Tyler Watson with the neck breaker. Went for the cover, but Hawkins was able to get the leg on the bottom rope. Tyler Watson, earlier this season, was the United States champion. He lost that championship to, to John Blackos, and then he defeated to win the championship. Who, who then went on to lose to Scott McShannon in that fatal four-way match back in Pain for Pride, which Tyler Watson was involved in. In fact, Tyler Watson was the one who lost to Scott McShannon in that matchup. Tyler Watson, I'm sure he, he he's got he's got he's got to have in mind to to want to walk out of this season champion again. Look at Hawkins with the counter. He, he begs the question, since he's been pushing for some kind of partnership with Bobby Mitchell, does Tyler Watson want to get in the tag title hunt? If it, with a victory tonight, does that take them one step closer to a tag title match? I guess we'll have to see. I mean, these guys have to get the victory first. This is not going to be easy. These guys teamed up for the first time ever. Where you got Brent Thompson and CJ Hawkins who've been teaming up for several years now. They've known each other for, for over a decade. Thompson off the ropes and there's a drop kick to the side of the head. And a snap 
suplex. Brent Thompson, one of the most decorated stars in AWF history. He's been tag team champion multiple times. He's been United States champion. He's been AWF world champion. He won the championship at Glory Days. It was back at Glory Days 3 where he won that title. And now Thompson on the top rope. Oh man, he went for the big knee drop and he missed. Drop kick by Tyler freaking Watson as he calls himself. Off the ropes. There's a big shot to the head. Watson, he, he's been saying all year long this is going to be the year of Watson. The year of Watson. And, you know, some detractors might say that he hasn't fulfilled that. There's a tag to Bobby Mitchell. Watson wanting out of here and a little some words being exchanged here by Bobby Mitchell and Tyler Watson. But nonetheless, Bobby Mitchell now the legal man. The king is in. And he's going up against Brent Thompson. Uh-oh. GTS time. Thompson's got Bobby up on his shoulders. But look at this. Bobby Mitchell knees, excuse me, elbow to the jaw. Able to get out of it. What's this? Oh, man. Modified DDT there. Spiking Brent Thompson's head into the mat. Now he's got Brent up on his shoulders. And then turned that into a sidewalk slam. And only a two count. You could argue this is old guard versus new guard here. You got two of the very best. Two call All-Stars Hall of Famers and Brent Thompson and CJ Hawkins. And you got Tyler Watson who, especially, especially coming into this season, was seen as someone who could be one of the future stars of the industry. And I, and I think that that could still happen despite some setbacks. Bobby Mitchell, who arrived only a few months ago and Bobby Mitchell has been taking over the world a lot of people very impressed with Bobby Mitchell a lot of people see a lot of big things in his future but you can't just wait around for the future if you want it you gotta take it and tonight is a big opportunity for Bobby Mitchell and Tyler Watson two and only a two count. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of two tag team matches taking place here tonight. The other being the team of Damian Valentine and Jamal Bedlam taking on Irvino and United States Champion Scott McShannon. It's a little bit later on. And they're, oh, boot to the face. What is Brent Thompson doing? He's got Bobby Mitchell up on the uh, top turnbuckle. Is he thinking superplex maybe? He is! Oh my god, big superplex. If he goes for a cover, that could be it right there. Instead, oh man! You know, he was going to go for the to the top row, but he went into a collision course with Tyler Watson, and Watson with a shot to the back of the head. Bobby Mitchell with a clothesline, and now look at this. Bobby Mitchell getting in the face of Tyler Watson, saying, hey, I can do this on my own. I don't need you to pull any, well, I won't use the word that he used, but he used stuff like that. Bobby went for some kind of suplex, but Brent Thompson able to get out of it. He's got him down. Strikes. Was it? Uh oh, cross arm breaker is locked in. The cross arm breaker is locked in, and Bobby Mitchell may have nowhere to go. Bobby now able to find a way to roll out of it, and he really locked out 
some serious damage could have been done to that arm. Bobby, he took his eye off the ball for a moment. And oh, here we go. Oh, wait, he got caught. Big slam there by Brent Thompson. Ken Thompson capitalized. He's, he went after Watson. He knocked Watson off the apron. Some bad blood there between those two. Watson now up to his feet. And wait, he's got a steel chair. Steel chair in hand. And here comes the referee. This is not a no disqualification match. Getting the chair out of there. Thankfully he is. And look at Watson disputing it with the referee. Wait, hold on. What the hell? What was that? What did he have in it? Was that... Was that Brass Knuckles? Oh my god, no. You gotta be kidding me. And that's three. The referee didn't see it. The referee had his back turned. And Bobby Mitchell using Brass Knuckles to the face of Brent Thompson. And now Brent, it, this team, Tyler Watson and Bobby Mitchell, picked up a victory over the Exterminators. Well, I guess that answers the question. It seems these two have joined forces. You think that the face of first class would be ecstatic, jubilant, excited, happy as hell to become the new AWF Extreme Champion. Hindsight being 2020, I'm not. I'm more disappointed, dissatisfied, and disgusted. And let me explain to you all why, because you'll never see the big picture of things unless that big picture happened to be a giant stick figure. You see, Travis, you are what we call in this industry a con man, a paper champion. You knew damn well if you put that AWF World Heavyweight Championship on the line against me here tonight, the results would have been the exact same. I would have walked out of here with the AWF World Championship around my waist, but you decided to give me the silver medal. Well, here's the news flash. Silver is now the new gold because of the fact that with this championship around my waist, the value has skyrocketed just like stocks. And unfortunately, also like stocks, that value of that world championship that you hold so precious has dropped tremendously. Now, you would have think that with you holding that championship, you were brought value. But your value for that championship has been what you consider as trash. Just like your legacy here in all of CAW. Not very honorable, if you ask me. Sean O'Connor left you with a lot of words to try and boost your ego up back at Call All-Stars. However, the simple fact is he was just being nice. I like to be a realist. He stated that you were fast. You were strong. You're talented. You were great on the mic. You are hilarious, which in, that's hilarious in itself. And that you have a great personality. The simple fact of the matter is, if I were to give you a better transcript of that, this is what I would say. You're weak. You're slow. You're untalented. Your mic skills are subpar at best. You have the comedic sense of a barrel of excrement burning on a porch. A personality that resembles sandpaper and you're frail. O'Connor made a great point though by saying that you are the perfect package. However, you are the perfect package to being my stepping stone to the top. 
of the AWF. And I do thank you, Travis. Thank you for showing the world that you will never, ever measure up to the face of first class. And that brings me to point number two. This championship that you see amount around my waist, Travis, it's decent at best. But I want you to take a great look at this championship because if I were a generous man, I'd give you back this championship because it will go perfect in your mental because trash with more trash this equals something that needs to be taken out and i like to take my trash on certain days and thankfully today is trash day because this is the last time you will see this championship belt here in the awf because this championship represents bloodshed that all of you leeches are always so hungry for it doesn't represent class it doesn't represent etiquette like it should like a championship should they say a man can make the title or the title can make the man well i will promise you this the next time you see me i will make a new championship belt for this company for the new awf extreme champion because a man of my stature deserves the finer things in life. He deserves to be paraded around. He deserves to be a role model. He should be on your kids' walls because they want to grow to be the face of first class because I am a self-made man. I am a businessman. I am a success. But you all decide to cling on to other people like Travis who are more disappointments than anything. But I can understand why because you all can feel disappointment and dissatisfaction in yourselves on a daily basis. So that's why you all decide to cling on to Travis due to the fact that you relate to him. You don't relate to me because of the fact that you will never be a success like the face of first class. And I'll leave you on this note. Success is such a sweet thing. And this championship belt only means more success is coming my way. Trust and believe. This is only the beginning. And here's another reality check for you all. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uprising. We got a lot to get to. We just heard from the very new extreme champion, Lewis Rivers. Lewis Rivers saying he's going to introduce a, a new championship belt. I see he can do whatever he wants. He's the extreme champion. As of earlier tonight, defeating Travis Sparks. And here comes a former world champion. Saw a little bit of uh, highlights of the past of Danny Hardy. Danny Hardy making his return at the Royal Rumble after being out for several months due to an injury that he suffered back in his AWF World Championship match at Cyberslam. He was champion on that night and he lost the title to Sean O'Connor. Danny Hardy is back though, here tonight. He's in singles competition, but here's the trick. Danny Hardy does not know who his opponent is. I don't know who his opponent is. No, no one knows except GMR. Because as we found out on the AWF website, Walter Scott is going to Superstar Mayhem. We knew he was leaving Uprising as of the Loser Leaves Uprising match. But what we didn't know is that he wasn't just out of the job, is that he would be going over to Superstar Mayhem in return for a Superstar Mayhem star to come to Uprising. So we're about to find out who that is, who's joining the red brand. Wait a minute, no way. Is that... Oh my god, it's, it's Nitro! The man that won the Call All-Stars 12 Royal Rumble match. 
former internet champion over on Superstar Mayhem and now member of the Uprising brand. Wow, that's huge. This shakes the landscape up here on Uprising. Nitro, he's been world champion in other promotions. He's been he's held several championships around the world. This is a a little bit of a different Nitro that we've seen over on Superstar Mayhem. The ultimate one getting a uh, very warm response here by our audience. A lot of people were watching on at the Call All-Stars Royal Rumble match and very happy to see Nitro win that match. Entering from number one. That's an incredible accomplishment. And now, he's here on Uprising. Referee's call for the bell, and it, here we go. I, I definitely did not think I'd see this here tonight, folks. Danny Hardy and Nitro. Nitro is taking it early on. Look at this, Danny Hardy dishing in the strikes. It is very interesting too. For the past several months, we've seen the Ultimate One align with Zayn LaFontaine. Wonderful motivation in their Murderers Row faction. That appears not to be the case anymore. Nitro now here on his own on Uprising, and Danny Hardy big clothesline sending Nitro to the floor. Now he's taunting him. See, Nitro, he, he, he could be hurt. He was holding his neck. Hopefully he's okay because it's going to take a lot to pick up a victory. Look at, look at Danny Hardy. These guys fighting out on the floor. Nitro stopping that, though. Sending Hardy into the ring. Heading up to the top rope. Big drop kick. Like I mentioned a few moments ago, the news broke on the AWF website. Hold on, some big news could be broken if this match is done here. No, it is not. But like I said, the news was broken on the AWF website coming out of the Royal Rumble that there was a, a secret deal made regarding that loser leaves town match between Lewis Rivers and Walter Scott. We knew Walter Scott, he was leaving Uprising. But we now know he's heading to Superstar Mayhem. That we'll, we'll worry about when we get to Superstar Mayhem. But what we also found out is that it wasn't just for free. It would be in exchange for a talent from Superstar, the Superstar Mayhem roster. And GMR and the new general manager of Superstar Mayhem made a deal. And it appears that Nitro was sent over to Uprising. That new general manager, by the way, I hear is going to be arriving on our next Superstar Mayhem episode so you want to check that out and see who it is I don't know who it is so I'll find out just like the rest of you guys but what we do know is we got Danny Hardy versus the ultimate one Nitro right now and that's that's a pretty cool thing you never know what you'll see here in the AWF anything can happen Oh man, big fall away slam. I'm being to oh hold on. Not enough there. I'm being told that we will hear from the former extreme champion Brian Stone sometime after the conclusion of this matchup. So stay tuned for that. A lot of people wondering what is next for Brian Stone after losing his championship at the Royal Rumble. He was hoping to walk out as a double champion. He walked out with no titles. And there might be someone who, who could become familiar with that, depending on how things go for Travis Sparks here tonight. Travis Sparks kicked off the night with two titles. Within the first 10 minutes, he's no longer extreme champion. But he isn't done. He's got an AWF World Championship match in our main event against Mason Chronic. After competing 
in a match tonight after being attacked by Mason Chronic. No one knows how healthy he'll be. I mean, clearly he's cleared. He's going to be competing here tonight. Could he be in the same state as a Brian Stone with no championships? Or will Travis Sparks pull off an unbelievable feat and retain his championship here tonight? We've seen him do it before. We've seen him pull off the un unthinkable. So that, but that's a little bit later on. Big clothesline there by Danny Hardy. Two. And only a two count. It was several months ago, after CyberSlam, Danny Hardy, he came to the to the, the ring and he said and he announced his injury and he said when he came back, he was gonna go win back the AWF World Championship. Will he I mean he he was unsuccessful in the Royal Rumble, so he won't be challenging for the championship at, at Glory Days, at least as of right now. We know potentially who could that could be. That could be John Blackos. But John Blackos has not indicated which championship he will be challenging for. John Blackos is here tonight, though. He is a member of the Uprising roster. And he's here tonight. Maybe we'll have a little bit uh, more insight on which championship he'll be challenging for at Glory Days. The stars of Uprising got to be hoping that he challenges Fisk over on Superstar Mayhem. That is if this is still the champion, of course, at Glory Days, because that would open things up for the AWF Championship here on the red brand. Of course, we also have Meltdown. You know the AWF Championship is defended in the main event, but you got to believe the championship is going to be defended on that night as well. Could we see... Danny Hardy challenged for the championship, or perhaps could we see his opponent Nitro challenge for the title? And he did win the Call All Stars Royal Rumble match, and it is a fresh start. Could, could we see it? I don't know. I mean, th this match could really sway what direction the number one contendership goes. Nitro now on the middle row. What's he looking to do? Oh! Drop kick. Sending Danny Hardy to the middle of the ring. The elbow to the leg. What is he doing? What is Danny Hardy doing here? He's up on the top. These men both all in the top. Big superplex. Took a lot out of the both of them. But it looks like it did most to Nitro Hardy into the cover. Two. And only a two count. Danny Hardy thought he might have had it there. Danny Hardy, one of the very best in the AWF in history, and I would even argue today. Danny Hardy is, is a name that, when you talk about the AWF, Danny Hardy, he's, he's got to be one of the first names you mention. He's been here for several, several years. He, he's been at the very top of the card for a long time. He, he's won the AWF Championship on two separate occasions. Not many people can say they've won the championship even more than one time. But Danny Hardy can say that. Idiot, now he hits the deep six. And only a two. And look at the disbelief on the face of Danny Hardy. He can't believe it. He thought he had it. Kick to the midsection. Oh, is he thinking? I thought he was setting up for, for Danger Bomb. Now 
Nitro was able to get out of it. Now hitting the Bulldog, about leaping off the middle rope. Shot to the face. What is he doing? What is Nitro got in mind here? Off the ropes. Oh my god. Leaping over the top rope and coming crashing down on the former world champion. Nitro wants to make a good first impression here. His first night part of the uprising roster. And leaping off the apron, hitting the big elbow across the chest. He's got to be mindful of the referee's count. If we up to a six, he throws Danny Hardy into the ring apron. Throws Hardy into the ring. Referee up to an eight. Oh, man. Ron Hardy chest first into the apron, but Nitro able to get in the ring right as the referee called for nine. If he would have waited one more second, he would have been counted out. There's a knee to the head. Only a two count there. Man, after having some shots to the face, referee going in to check if Danny Hardy is okay, if he can continue this matchup. It appears the referee is given the go-ahead. If this can continue, thankfully we have the referee to go in there and make those calls. Just to, just to make sure that our, our talent is, is healthy. And look at this. Wait, hold on. Oh, man, he went for the running knee, but Danny Hardy was able to block it, hitting the drop toe hold. He throws Nitro back in the ring. Oh, what now? Is he thinking Danger Bomb? Here we go. But Nitro able to find his way out of it. Now it's sending Hardy into the ropes. Hitting a swinging neck breaker. Hardy's down. Nitro setting it up. And oh, the big running knee. Into the cover. Danny Hardy's shoulders are on the mat. Two, and that's three. The ultimate one, Nitro, picking up the victory in his uprising debut. Coming over from Superstar Mayhem. And what does he do on night one? He pins a former two-time world champion. Congratulations to Nitro. The sky's the limit for this man. Folks, we have more when we come back. We're not done yet.
shooting for the stars when I couldn't make a killing. Didn't have a dime, but I always had a vision. Always had high, high hopes. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uprising. A lot of people were shocked when that man right there, Brian Stone, lost his extreme championship at the Royal Rumble to Travis Sparks. And Brian Stone has got to be very unhappy that he lost the championship. And on top of that, the man that defeated him for the title is now no longer even the champion. The extreme championship in possession of Lewis Rivers. That's how we kick things off here tonight. Brian Stone also is trying to win the AWF World Championship at the Royal Rumble. But of course, in addition to not walking out with his Extreme Championship, he did not walk out with that championship either. He walked in with one title and walked out with none. He took a gamble and it didn't work. So now a lot of people are wondering what is next for Brian Stone. Is he going to be trying to get his Dream Championship back? Is he going to go after the AWF World Championship? Does he have any other goals? Is he, does Don Martin associate with Brian Stone? Does he have a, a different plan? We're going to hear from Brian Stone right now. So let's hear from him. I gotta say... It's a little weird walking down that aisle without the 10 pounds of chrome wrapped around my waist. At the Royal Rumble, I learned a very hard lesson. Karma really is a cold-blooded bitch. And as much as it pisses me off that I wasn't able to walk out with the AWF Championship. As much as it pisses me off that I lost the Extreme Championship. All I can do is just move on and learn from this. Because let's be frank. At the Royal Rumble, I showed Travis that I was 100% all man. But what it comes down to is that he showed me why he became the champion in the first fucking place. And to that, I send my congratulations to him. The better man won. But don't get it twisted. While it was fun holding the Extreme Championship around my shoulder, having that AWF Championship in my hands is just that much of a better feeling. The hunt is not over. I may have lost for now, but opportunity will present itself. And Travis, I pray that you are still the champion by then. Because I guarantee you, the outcome will be very different. I will be the AWF champion. I will take this company into the next Wait a minute That's that's the music Oh my god it's Reverend Joseph Reverend Joseph of the Disciples I did not did not think we would see him coming out here right now and he's not with the disciples he's by himself the disciples who lost the world tag team championships to the blade runners at the royal rumble a lot of people very shocked that that happened it's not often the disciples lose 
in tag team competition here in the AWF. But that was one of those rare nights. Reverend Joseph, though, staring at Brian Stone, making his way to the ring. What is going on here? Hopefully we're provided with some answers. Brian Stone. Don't worry, there's no reason to fear. I'm actually here to help you. See, the Royal Rumble was not just a bad night for you. It was a bad night for my disciples. A rare bad night. I'm sure you're aware of what we have done and what we plan on doing. We plan on taking over this company. And those that make the smart decision to join us will reap the benefits. And those who so poorly choose to fight against us will just be casualties of war. And Brian Stone, I watched your championship match. In fact, I've been watching you for a long time and I've been impressed. See, I think you can help us and in turn we can help you. There's something missing in the disciples. And I think that something is standing right in front of me. A message was sent to me and I listened. And it told me that we needed someone like you. And I think you need people like us. You have put your trust in the likes of Don Martin. And where did that get you? You no longer have the championship you fought to obtain. And you certainly don't have the championship that you really want it. But I'm not here to pick on your mistakes, your failures. I'm giving you an opportunity to correct them. Join us. Join the disciples. Help us so we can help you and it will only be a matter of time before my disciples are tag team champions again and you are AWF world champion and oh my god Brian, Brian Stone just spit green mist into the face of Reverend Joseph I take that as an emphatic no to his offer Oh, oh, man. Ready or not, here we come. Brian Stone may grow to regret that decision. Look who's in the ring as the disciples. The Nyan Apollos have taken out Brian Stone with a disciple death drop. It seems the disciples have, have changed their target, and the target is Brian Stone.
I'm touching myself tonight. Still the champion. Tonight was going to be the end of the line for me, regardless of how the match went. I came back with two goals in mind. One to win the AWF world title, and two to shape my legacy here at Call All Stars. Five years later, that's what I've done. And thank you to those who do believe I'm the boat. It's been fun. Thank you, Paul Stark. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, after another excellent Call All Stars matchup, the best of all time, the boat. Sean O'Connor announced to the world he would be retiring from the wrestling industry. He, he's been doing it for so many years, accomplished so many things, had some great matches at calls. He's been at AWF since the very beginning, back in 2010, was World Tag Team Champions. He went on to win the United States Championship, perhaps one of the greatest to ever hold that title. Sean Connor took a few years away from the AWF, and when he came back, he had one goal in mind, and it was to win the AWF Championship, and he achieved just that back at CyberSlam. He's been part of two AWF Championship matches at Call All-Stars, and th this guy has done it all. Look at his resume. It speaks for itself. It's a Hall of Fame career, if I could ever say so. So AWF wants to take this time to thank the boat. Sean O'Connor for everything he's done in his time here on the AWF Network. As tough as it is to see established names like Sean O'Connor and so many more reach that point in their career where they decide that they're going to retire and, and walk away. There's one good thing that comes out of it, and that's opportunity. It's an opportunity for the young superstars here in the AWF to rise up and fight for that spot. Here comes two men. Got to be people. Got to gotta be some, some guys that people are thinking could take that spot. You got Damian Valentine, the show. 
one of the fastest rising stars in this industry. Made his mark on day one, and then you got his tag team partner, Jamal Bedlam. And you see that around his waist. That's the Call All Stars tag team title belt. Of course, he holds that with Walter Scott, who is now a part of Superstar Mayhem, part of the East Coast Connection. They have their own business. Walter's got his, gonna have his business on Superstar Mayhem. The Savage guy has his business here, and it's with Damian Valentine. And look at what these guys have done since they have arrived here in the AWF. Certainly, they've gone after Irvino. They've gone after all of our favorites like Buddy Bannon and George Sapp and Jamal Bedlam. What? You got to give him credit. One hell of a performance in the Royal Rumble match. So many eliminations. I, I thought Jamal Bedlam and Damian Valentine were going to go all the way to the end the way things were going. But that was not to be the case. John Blackos went on to, to win that match. In fact, John Blackos eliminated Jamal Bedlam. The man who eliminated Damian Valentine, however, is that man right there, Irvino. Irvino, who's been trying to get some retribution ever since he's been attacked by Damian and Jamal Bedlam. On our last edition of Uprising, Irvino was on a two-on-one situation. He had nowhere to go. And an unlikely uh, source came to help him out in the United States champion Scott McShannon. And that is what has led to tonight this tag team matchup. Now we await the arrival of the U.S. champ. There he is, the King of the North, Scott, McSan Scott McShannon, the United States Champion. And a moment ago, we were talking about Call All-Stars. We're going to talk about Call All-Stars 12. we got to talk about what this man did at Call All-Stars, where he defeated Brandon Wolf in his retirement match. He was the hand-picked opponent for the Call All-Stars Hall of Famer. And he walked out with the victory. It was an incredible matchup. It may be the biggest match of Scott McShannon's career. Now Scott McShannon's got to carry where carry the weight of where of what Brandon Wolf has built. Scott McShannon wants to be at the very top of the industry. He wants to be the man. And I think he has what it takes to get there. I think Scott McShannon is on a path to success I mean look at what he's holding the United States Championship that proves it right there Scott McShannon a fighting champion We've seen him defend the championship against Bobby Mitchell in our last edition of Uprising and I'm sure he'd have no problem defending that championship against maybe a Damian Valentine or Jamal Bedlam He's eager to fight the best. And this is a huge opportunity for Bedlam and Valentine. One of those guys get a victory over Scott McShannon. That could put them in title contention. And the referee calls for the bell. Here we go. We got Irvino and Damian Valentine starting this one off. There's a kick to the head. And the shoot standing shooting star press. Folks, this is how it all started. It started with these two men. After Irvino was unsuccessful in his challenge for the Extreme Championship back at Pain for Pride, he came out and addressed the audience and what was next. And Damian Valentine made his AWF debut. We've seen some videos for the show, but he made his in-ring debut. And oh, look at that. There's the triangle dropkick sending Damian to the floor. And Irvino going after Jamal Bedlam, knocking him off the apron. Oh man, look at this. Oh my god! Irvino diving over the top rope, taking Damian Valentine down. 
Like I was saying, on that night, it was Damian Valentine, he, he didn't come alone. He brought the savage Jamal Bedlam with him and attacked Irvino. And Irvino, he's been trying to get trying to get the upper hand, trying to get a little bit of revenge ever since. Look at this. You can see Jamal Bedlam. He's panicking. Oh, man. Springboard European uppercut. Things are not looking good for the show right now. He's in trouble. Irvino on the top. There's a swanton bomb. And that could do it. Oh, Damien able to get his shoulder up. Damien Valentine, he was a part of Call All-Star 12. He was a part of that eight-man ladder match for GMR's box. He came very close to picking up the victory, but did not walk out with that. That would be Superstar Mayhem's Alex James that is now in possession of that. What the? Oh my god! Belly to belly suplex by the King of the North. Scott McShannon, he's got a, he's got a new haircut that we saw back at Call All-Stars 12. I don't know if Damien's going to be uh, rubbing his hand through his hair. Or, well, not much left uh, there is, but I know this man isn't. The savage Jamal Bedlam in the ring staring down Scott McShannon. I was hoping we would get this, and here we go. Jawbreaker there by Bedlam. Bedlam sending McShannon into the ropes. Oh, man. There's a spear taking down McShannon. Oh my god, shot to the head with that back, flip, back fist. Scott McShannon and Jamal Bedlam, no strangers to one another. We've seen them face off before in, in El Dorado Championship Wrestling. And look at this, Bedlam taking it to the chest of McShannon with those shots. No, shot to the side of the head. Jamal Bedlam had one hell of a call All-Stars 12. Captured the call All-Stars Tag Team Championships in an excellent triple threat tag team title match. Bedlam, he, he holds championship gold all around the world. And you know he wants to add yet another championship to his list of accolades here in the AWF. Look at Scott McShannon. Scott McShannon is not going to go down without a fight. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Putting Bedlam down. One. Oh man, only a one count. Not a lot of people can take the fight to Jamal Bedlam. He's just got the size advantage. He's he's bigger than almost everyone he faces. With Scott McShannon, if there's anyone who could try, it's him. And look at this. These clotheslines, and he's not knocking down Bedlam. And oh my god! He went for another one. Bedlam countered into a German suplex. Belly to belly. Belly to belly suplex. And the fans... Here tonight in Newark, they're they're not happy. Big Scott McShannon fans here tonight, but things not looking good for the United States champion. And now Damian Valentine wants some. There's a face buster. And with Damian Valentine, he's taking it all in. He doesn't care what the fans think of him. Off the middle rope, form shots the head. And into the cover. And only a one count. Damian Valentine certainly has no problem picking up the scraps here after Jamal Bedlam put in the work. 
Damien looking for something here. He's got something in mind. Setting it up. Oh, he went for the Enziguri. But Scott McShannon moving all the way. Now he's got him up on his shoulders. Scott Buster. Into the rope goes Valentine. And he gets thrown into a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Scott McShannon's got to use this opportunity to try and tag out. Does just that. Oh, man. McShannon throwing uh, Damian Valentine into the boot of Irvino. Oh, jeez. Dropping the uh, Valentine head first into the mat. Up on the ropes. Oh, my. Into the Hurricane Rana. Irvino, one of the fastest stars on the Uprising roster. He likes to fly all around the ring. It's hard to keep up with. If you know, throwing Valentine to the floor. Oh, man, here we go. And he jumps all over the ropes on top of him. He doesn't care. He's going to put his body on the line. Not, not afraid to take high risks. Irvino. Some common thrown at Jamal Bedlam. As he waits for Damian Valentine to get up to his feet. Damian's up and... Oh my god! The Dragon can run up. But you can see here comes Jamal Bedlam. He broke up the pin. Scott McShannon and Irvino with two shots to the head to send Jamal Bedlam out to the floor. Irvino, he's got to focus back on Damian Valentine here. Oh man, what the hell is he doing? Oh my god, no way. Don't. This seems awfully risky. Oh my god. He went for a Hurricane Rana from the top. But Damian Valentine, he didn't go down with him. He held on. I mean, Arvino took all of that and now throwing Arvino into his corner. And here's the tag to the Savage. Going after the arm. Bedlam now, German suplex. Things are not looking good for Arvino. Brazilian native. Now he's up. Could be a Savage Cyclone. If he hits a Savage Cyclone, it's over. Remember, it was Jamal Bedlam that threw Irvino out of the ring in the Royal Rumble match. Now look at his springboard kick. That took a lot out of Irvino, but it was enough to take Jamal Bedlam down for just, even just for a moment. Here's a tag. What the hell? What are your Scott McShannon and Irvino do? Oh my god! Hurricane Rana into a power bomb. And that that might be enough. No! The Savage getting the shoulder up almost immediately. What is it gonna take to keep Jamal Bedlam down? Oh wait, hold on. Oh my god. Jamal Bedlam, he was in trouble, and he raked the eyes. The referee, I, I don't know if he caught it, but he got a, he got his fingers in the eyes, and now look at this. Here's the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Oh, my God. Big shot to the head. Big punch by the Savage, and now he's setting it up. He's looking for that lariat. You gotta believe. And there it is. Big lariat. And that's gotta do it. He sends Irvino off the apron. He can go for the cover. And he might have it. Wait a minute. Hold on. He just tagged out to Damian Valentine. What's, wait, what is going on here? He's got McShannon up. He hit the final cut.
And then Damien sending Irvino off the apron again. And the cover on Scott. Two. And that's three. Damien Valentine just pinned the United States champion. Uh, folks, we got an interesting development here. Jamal Bedlam, I, I think he had the, the champion beat. And he tagged out to Damian Valentine. So Damian Valentine just pinned the U.S. champion's shoulder to the max. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if we could become something more. So when they needed us, we could fight the battles. That they never could. And ladies and gentlemen, it is now main event time here on Uprising. A main event that we did not know was going to be happening here tonight when we came on the air. But here it is. We kicked off the night with Travis Sparks, the double champion, defending his extreme championship against Lewis Rivers. Lewis Rivers picked up the victory and won the championship. The extreme championship, that is. Travis Sparks was then attacked by Mason Chronic. That man right there, the murderer. And Mason Chronic let Travis know that he wants to cash in on his Survivor Series championship opportunity tonight. What that is, is back at Survivor Series. It was Uprising versus Superstar Mayhem. GMR put together a team and then try and motivate the team to get the victory for Uprising. He offered that anyone on the team would, would receive a championship opportunity if they won. Who was on that team? Mason Chronic, who is yet to cash in on a championship opportunity. In fact, he wasn't able to for a long time because he attacked GMR after the match. He was suspended from the AWF. That led to a, a match between Mason Chronic and GMR unsanctioned, where Mason Chronic destroyed the general manager of Uprising. That led to the Royal Rumble, where Mason Chronic faced the owner of the AWF, Sean Walsh. And Sean Walsh, you, know, you gotta give credit where credit is due for putting in the fight and staying in it as long as he did. But he took a beating. He was annihilated at the Royal Rumble by that man right there and as per the stipulation Mason Chronic is no longer suspended no repercussions and that's why he's cashing in on his championship opportunity tonight GMR given him the request is we went to break and then we found out as soon as we came back that GMR had signed off on the match we found out Travis Sparks is cleared as you see right here a lot of people are wondering if he would be cleared to compete here tonight but he is but there's no way Travis Sparks can be 100% he had a championship match earlier on tonight he was attacked by Mason Chronic certainly could be a very tough night for that man he's entering Hell's Palace 
but he hopes that he can finish tonight and it'll be ultimate glory. You've seen Travis time and time again when the odds are stacked against him find a way to come out on the other end. Can he do it once again tonight? Regardless if he's 100% or not, Travis Barks, he's not backing down. He's here for the fight. And it might be the fight for his life. That's what's on the line, folks. The AWF Championship, the richest prize in this company. So many of the great competitors have held that championship. From the likes of Ben Hitman, Evan Rockville, Tattoo Taker, Danny Hardy, Sean O'Connor, Christopher Wonder, and, and so many more. And that man right there, Travis Sparks. Travis taking a one last look at his championship before he had taken one more. I mean, he's going up against the murderer. Those of you who've, who've seen Mason Chronic throughout his career know what he's about, know what he can do. He's been world champion around the world. He's been CCWO world champion. He's been CCL world champion. He's been COH world champion. He's done it all, but he's never been the AWF champion. The referee's call for the bell, and here we go. It's main event time here on Uprising. Travis going right after Chronic. Oh my god. Chronic threw him up in the air and caught him. Tombstone. What the? He just did a tombstone pile driver. The arms are crossed. Shoulders are down. And that's three. What the hell did we just see? As soon as it begins, it ends. Mason Chronic is what? The murderer. Mason Chronic is the new AWF World Champion. The most dominant championship victory in the history of the AWF. Closes out Uprising here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, your new AWF World Champion, Mason Chronic. Oh, wait a minute. We've been waiting all night for this man to make his way out here. The man that won the Royal Rumble match and has a, his date set at Glory Days 5, the challenge for a world championship of his choosing. And there he is, the French Phenom, the Fat Bitch Slayer, it's John Blackos. He eliminated six men in the Royal Rumble match and went on to be victorious, winning the Royal Rumble. He's going to the main event of Glory Days 5, and he could be looking at his uh, potential opponent, are we finding out right now that John Blackwoods is going to be going after the AWF Championship here on Uprising? The fans are on their feet here. John Heading into the ring, and in the ring is the new AWF World Champion, Mason Chronic. Could we see at Glory Days 5, Mason Chronic defending that AWF Championship against John Blackos? I, I, I don't know what's going on here. I, I, I can't hear what these guys are saying. 
But it, has John Blackos decided he's going to challenge for Uprising's AWF Championship? Mason Chronic, he's leaving the ring. My God, folks. What a way to end the show here tonight. Mason Chronic is the new AWF Champion. And he could... He could already be worried about a future challenger in the Royal Rumble winner, John Blackos. Hopefully we get more answers for several questions that coming out of this show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us here tonight. We will see you all for Superstar Mayhem.